guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today we are doing my October book haul. So I'm just going to not lie to you guys anymore and tell you that there will be a part two book haul or there won't be a part two book haul because I said at the beginning of September that there absolutely will be a part two and I was good and there wasn't. <laughs> So we'll just kind of see what happens from now on. I did get my TV era down to 375, so I've been doing better, and even with this haul, it's still at that. So <laughs> I'm gonna try and keep it below 400 throughout the year, and then maybe do another unhaul around Christmas time. But I found uh, just over 30 books to share with you guys. A few of them were books that I have already read, so that's good, no adding to the TBR. And I found, once again, some awesome stuff. Once again, I'm going to apologize for not doing major descriptions with these. I like to go into my books somewhat blind. I just enjoy it more that way. I like to know just enough that I want to read it, but nothing major. So I will link all of the good links for all of these books down below in the comments. So you can click on them if you want to learn more about what they're about. And if you guys are not familiar with my book hauls, I get all of my books for $3 or less. Most of them I get for between 10 cents and $2. So that's how I'm able to do these massive book hauls every month. I'm very budget conscious. As much as I love books, I don't want them to make me broke. Um, so I do have a budget. I'll be talking about that in a video soon. I will also be doing a how to get books for cheap slash a dollar. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. But that's just kind of explain my book hoarding because if I was paying five to ten dollars for all of these books, then I wouldn't be having this big of a book haul. First up, I found The Pledge by Kimberly Durting. This one is, I thought it was like a scary, like witchy, I don't know, gothic-y book, but I think it is a dystopian book, and that's really all I know, but it looked kind of cool, and it was Halloween time, so I got it. Hopefully I haven't already hauled this one, but I don't think I've shown you guys yet. I've got Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. I have never read a Morgan Matson book, so I picked up a couple of hers this month, but she does like contemporary romance and friendship and summery springtime type of reads. I picked up Philippa Fisher's Fairy God Sister. This is book one by Liz Kessler. Liz Kessler is the author of the Emily Winstap series, which is the middle grade series about mermaids that blew me away. It's so fun no matter what age you are. It was so well done. It was just like, it's so perfect for middle grade, but also perfect for like any age. I loved it so much. So I decided to check out her other series about magic and fairy tales and all that goodness. I picked up The Gathering Storm, the Katarina Trilogy Volume 1. This one is about a necromancer, and I know there's other reasons that I wanted to read it, and I can't remember them right now, but it looks cool, and winter is coming, so I thought it was a good wintry read, because she's all like in the snow and stuff. And that was by Robin Bridges. I picked up Wildwood Dancing by Juliet Mariller. This one is a retelling of The Twelve Dancing Princesses, which is one of my all-time favorite fairy tales, and I recently read Entwined, which I absolutely love, and it has this magical, like, Midsummer Night's Dreams cover, and I just, I read, like, one or two retellings a month, so I thought I'd check it out. Picked up Gone by Lisa McMahon, this is the final book in the Wake trilogy. I still need the other two, but Wake is kind of dystopian, I think, but it's about, like, people that fall asleep. When other people are sleeping around them, they, like, fall asleep into their dreams, or they fall asleep and become them temporarily, something like that, something kind of creepy. Um, <laughs> but I thought it'd be good for fall, and hopefully I'll find the other ones. Picked up The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson. A girl is a dog walker and falls in love with somebody, so yeah. Finally found The Iron Trial by Cassandra Clare and Holly Black. This is book one in the Magisterium series. I have book two. I think there's like two or three more. I like Cassandra Clare and Holly Black, so I'm interested to see what they do with this middle grade fantasy. Picked up The Sorcerer Air by Cinda Williams Chima. I have several of her other books. I think this is the only book I have in this series, but I've just heard really good things about her fantasy, and they have beautiful covers, so I was a sucker and bought it. Picked up The Architect of Song by A.G. Howard, this who is the author of the Splintered series, and this one is, it says, sometimes love begins with death. I think this one is either a Romeo and Juliet retelling or a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but it's freaking amazing and beautiful, and I've heard really good things about it, and it is a, either a series or a trilogy. Picked up an unfortunate library copy of Stargazer by Claudia Gray. This one is part of her Evernight series, which is, I believe, a vampire series. 
Finally found another Land of Stories by Chris Colfer. This one is a grim warning. This is book three. I have book four. I've had it for forever, but I can't find book one and book two. But this one is about like kids that enter fairy tale stories and have to deal with all different kinds of books. So like <laughs> Mother Goose and Wizard of Oz and Alice in Wonderland and all that kind of stuff, which is like right up my alley. Really excited to find Beast by J Donna Jo Napoli. I was actually getting ready to order this one on Book Outlet. Donna Jo Napoli wrote Dark Shimmer, which is one of my all-time favorite books, and this is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. She does a lot of retellings. It's kind of funny, there's a tear on this one, but it looks like the guy is crying. <laughs> um, so this is, yeah, just a Beauty and the Beast retelling to add to my retelling pile. Picked up Before Tomorrowland by Jeff Jensen, Jonathan Case, and Brad Bird. This one I got for a quarter. It's something about, like, Disney. Um, so... I got it. Yay! I found Crystal Storm by Morgan Rose. This is book five in Fallen Kingdoms. I have book one in hardback and book four in paperback, so I'm getting there with getting the series. This is one of the main series that I want to read, and just like kingdomy magical goodness. Rehauling the Amber Spyglass book three in His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. I unhauled these last year before our move, but I do want to read these eventually. I keep going back and forth. I've heard really good things and then I've heard that it's like super boring and not that great. So let me know what you guys think down below if I should keep this one. I picked up 99 Days by Katie Catugno. One of her other books that is like the companion to this came out this year and I heard really great things about it, more contemporary romance, which is not like majorly my thing, but I usually keep a couple really popular ones on my pile. Picked up Hawthorne by Carol Goodman. This one is like about a magical school and I think this is book two or three in the series and it just honestly the cover was beautiful. The first book I think is Ravencliff and it's just like about a magical school and it's supposed to be like dark and magical. <laughs> I picked up Ashes to Ashes which I hauled earlier this year and then I wound up trading it for something but I refound it. Fire with Fire by Jenny Han and Shaban Vivian. These are part of the Burn for Burn trilogy and I love Ginny Han so now I have all the books so I can read them soon. Next up I'm going to share some books that I have already read so that's very exciting and I have quite a few of them this time. Really excited to find Armada by Ernest Klein. <sighs> uh, this is the author of Ready Player One. This was my first introduction to him and I'm so glad because it's not as good as Ready Player One but I didn't go into it judging it because of Ready Player One so I wound up loving it still whereas I feel like if you've read Ready Player One first, then you might not like this one as really at all just because your expectations were too high, but this one is about a young kid who's obsessed with video games and Star Trek and all kinds of nerdy things and his dad is dead and he lives with his mom and he works in a video game shop and then things start to happen and <laughs> it's adventuresque and really, really cool and I loved it so much. It's super nerdy. It is adult, but it was completely appropriate in my opinion. Um, this is just... There's like spaceships and all kinds of fun things. This dust jacket is so cool. And ah, uh, I listened to this on audiobook narrated by Will Wheaton and I absolutely loved it. This one is just so fun and it gives me warm fuzzies and I just want to like immediately read it again, which is cool because it's not my typical type of book, but I loved it. I loved it a lot. Super excited to find this one, which is hilarious. I found Hitty, Her First Hundred Years by Rachel Field illustrated by Dorothy P. Lathrop. This is a Newbery Award winner that I read when I was a kid and I bought it and owned it and this is really hard to find and for some reason I unhauled it. It's kind of a boring book because of the time period. It's like 1920s um, but I'm rereading all the Newbery Award winning books and this one is like pretty soon on that list and this was an ex-library that was in really good condition so very excited that I have it again. Then I also found Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. Um, the author of Stuart Little and all that kind of stuff. I haven't read this in a long time, but I want to do a reread, and I have all of E.B. White's, like, most famous books now, so I was excited to pick up this guy. And then I picked up some American Girl books. I, I don't know if you guys know what I've been collecting these. So I've been collecting these American Girl treasuries. This is Kit's story collection, which I've never read any of Kit's stuff, but all the American Girl um, books. These are all chapter books and there's six and there's dolls that go with them and each doll is set in a certain time period and Kit is 1934. She wasn't out when I was younger so I never read these 
but I want to like reread the American Girl books and a lot of my classic childhood reads because they were so good and they had such sweet memories around them. This edition is really cool because it has like gold pages and it has all six books in it with all the original pictures and everything and a built-in bookmark. Um, so I didn't find Samantha's version of that, but I found a different like collector's edition which is kind of fun and pretty. And Samantha was my favorite and it has all of Samantha's stories in here. And it was just nicer f for me to have the collection rather than the individual books because they're like 60 pages and they're chapter books and they're really small. So it's nice to have them in like a real book form. And I also have Kaya, I think. Um, so I, quite, I need quite a few more, but I was really happy to find these and hopefully to do like a video on it next year, even though that's kind of silly. Then the only book that I purchased like off the internets and not from like a used bookstore or a library, I went ahead and got The Mad Man's Daughter by Megan Shepherd because this is one of my all-time favorite books and it's my scariest read to date and I'll post my freezer books video down below which is the scariest books I've ever read if you haven't seen it already and if it's up um but I love this series so much particularly this book I just this is again one that I just want to immediately jump back into I listened to it on audiobook and it was extraordinary <laughs> it's just so well done and it is a retelling of the Isle of Dr. Moreau it's about his daughter and so there's like all this creepy stuff with like animals and science and just Ooh, it's so good and scary and creepy and it's a horror book but it's like I don't know it's it's Victorian era I think it's Victorian era and it's just it's just I love it and it gives me like such happy thoughts the ending blew me away then again I found Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince in the Bloomsbury edition unfortunately this didn't have the dust jacket anymore but thankfully these have the cover printed on the actual book so now I have the um, Order of the Phoenix and the Half-Blood Prince I'm doing a Harry Potter themed guest room so these are going to be perfect for that I hope to eventually find the whole collection I don't really want to order them I know I think they're out of print but I keep like finding different Harry Potter books so I'm really 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 happy that I have this they're so colorful and fun and you know it's nice to have like lots and lots of Harry Potter stuff forever this one I paid a little bit more for which is kind of silly so this is a madness so discreet by Minnie McGinnis this one I paid like three bucks for it was like haunting me literally I want to read it it's about a girl I think in the 1800s in the same asylum and like magical paranormal things happen to her I really did not like not a drop to drink by Minnie McGinnis and I just the reasons I didn't like it made me kind of feel like I wasn't going to like her overall. And then I kept hearing the same type of things about her other books. Not a female of the species, but all her other books. Everyone came saying they're like super weird or kind of off. And so this is like me giving Mindy another chance because uh, the cover is beautiful and it's Halloween time. So I may or may not get to this one during Spookathon as my thriller. I'm not entirely sure. Asylum stuff kind of freaks me out, but since it's set in the past, it might be okay for me. So let me know if you guys have read this or if you love Mindy McGinnis. Then, I think my most exciting find, besides the Harry Potter book, I found the complete set of the Grishaverse! <laughs> or the Grisha trilogy, I guess. I already have Shadow and Bone, but I'm going to give this extra copy to my sister. Because I found these all for like $2 a piece. And these are the old covers that are out of print now, I believe. Um, so I've got Shadow and Bone, Root and Rising, or... Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm, and Ruin and Rising. Now I have no excuse because I also have The Language of Thorns and I also have Cricket Kingdom, so I'm only short Six of Crows. It has been impossible for me to find Lee Bardugo books um, until like the last couple of months for some reason. I'm really excited and really nervous. I'm going to do a blog whenever, or a vlog whenever I start reading these. Um, but this one is set in like Russia, Russian fantasy, like magic and friendship and all kinds of goodness and it's like probably the most talked about series that I've like heard about besides like A Court of Thorns and Roses. Like I see it more on Instagram on YouTube than I do like pretty much anything else <laughs> consistently and I was super nerdy last year and I went and watched like my top six favorite YouTubers. I watched their top ten favorite fantasy books because they all had one and I like totaled them out and every single one of them talked about this series. So really excited sad I'm behind but I'm making up for it and I'm gonna dive into these 
hopefully by the end of the year, possibly November. If not, I'm going to at least start them in December because this is like a high priority book and I don't want to put these off like I do a lot of my other books. Whew, okay, hopefully this wasn't too long. I'll try to keep the description short so the video is not forever long. But that was my October book haul. I will be doing a young adult swap and trade haul again because I have almost 10 books now um, in a couple of weeks and I think I'll be doing a classics book haul by the end of the month. I've been saving a couple of pretty classics that I found so lots of yummy book hauls in your future. Um, let me know if you guys found anything good this month or if you think I will like any of these and I'll see you guys next time on the bright side.